What happens when water is exposed to EMF, or wireless radiation? Here's something you may not know. Water is conscious, and it responds vibrationally to whatever it is exposed to. At Omnia, we've done an experiment where we froze and photographed three samples of water. Water which was not exposed to EMF radiation, the baseline, looked like this. Water which was exposed to an EMF field, a 5G radiation field in fact, looked like this. And water which was exposed to EMF that is balanced by the Omnia radiation balancer looked like this. See the difference? Remember, your body is 70% water. And here's a special offer for the Journey to Truth crowd. Just enter the word TRUTH in caps at the checkout for your 10% discount. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Just a reminder, tickets are still available for our conference, May 22nd through the 25th in Grafton, Illinois. If you want to come out and join us, those are available at journeytotruthcon.com. And if you can't make it in person, live stream tickets are available for $99 and we promise the live stream experience will be worth it. So grab a ticket and come hang out with us. We can't wait for it. We're really looking forward to it. It's literally going to be here before we know it. So uh, Daryl spoke uh, last year at the conference, which was an amazing time, and I'm sure he can vouch for that. But it was a lot of fun, so we're looking forward to that. And just a reminder, guys, the Hopewell Farm CBD promo code is back to Journey to Truth 10, which gets you 10% off all their products. It's some amazing stuff. I highly recommend it. It's good for you, your pets, anybody. Uh, it's really amazing CBD. It's the best I've tried. So uh, that is available in the link below, 10% off Journey to Truth 10. So we are joined by our friend, Daryl James. We've had him on the show a number of times. Like I said, he spoke at the conference last year. I mean, there's still a lot Daryl hasn't shared with us on this channel, but today we're going to get into some information that Daryl has never shared publicly. And uh, some of it might be controversial, but we're going to share it either way because um, well, we'll let Daryl share why this is important information. So welcome to the show, Daryl. Thank you. Good to be back. <laughs> yeah. Good to be good back. To have you back. So. Yeah, I, I, from my understanding, you know, you shared some of this with me privately, and uh, it's some, I mean, I was completely intrigued by the information. And do you want to explain to people why you haven't shared this information yet and why you feel like it's time to share it now? I don't know, just because it is kind of controversial, it goes, uh, one part of it goes into kind of like religion a bit, but in, uh, another part of it goes into, I don't know, kind of the political climate right now, I would say. And uh, yeah, it's just something that, I mean, I, I just didn't want to bring it out initially in my first interview because I just didn't think it was time. So, but yeah, it was things that, things that I saw with the Kino and, and things that with Robert, that was, that was uh, you know, who was the executive officer of my command that he told me and stuff like that. And it seemed to be the most important thing to him that he actually accomplished in this mission. But uh, yeah, so I didn't. And I remember somebody, I think it was in one of your interviews, they said, uh, it was one of the comments, they said, Daryl's not sharing everything that Robert told him. And it kind of, I, th I thought it was oh, kind of yeah. somebody, yeah, put that in the comments. So yeah. Somebody's, somebody's trying to give you the nudge. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. And, and, you know, I understand why you don't want to just come out and slam people over the head with a sledgehammer in your first interview, you know, so yeah it makes sense yeah so. and, and we 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 appreciate you um deciding to come forward right now with this stuff and uh so i don't know if you just want to take it away w where you want to start with this stuff and then i have some questions along the way yeah sure i actually my first time i had notes <laughs> um i wanted to write notes um when i was being tortured by aquino just out of desperation i said uh what in name of christ do you want i yelled out and uh, he like stomped his feet on the ground, almost like he was throwing a fit. 
it kind of reminded me of like the ending of Rumpelstiltskin when the woman says Rumpelstiltskin's name. And uh, he said, stop saying that, stop that. And this was the reptile, you know, the, the rep, not the, you know, the meat puppet, but the reptile. And uh, I kind of like caught on to what was happening. And I said, I just said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to undo my straps and undo the straps of my feet and let me out of here. And he started doing it. He started undoing the straps on my feet. And the goon was there. That guy I told you that, you know, the English guy that was always at the bar and he had the shaved head. And then he started almost kind of talking to him out of the side of his mouth. Like, stop him. He was like saying stuff like that. But he was, he kept on undoing the straps. I was tied to like a rack. And I said, like, in the name, of, uh, in the name of Yeshua, I command you to stop talking to him and let me go. And uh, the goon kind of got wise to what, what was happening. He looked back and forth, and uh, he cocked his arm back and punched me in the face and knocked me out. And uh, I woke up. Yeah, he messed me up. But Tino messed me up pretty bad after that. I woke up with like his hands in my mouth, and he like dislocated my jaw and cut my jaw off and things like that cut my tongue out and ate it in front of me and things like that. But, uh, yeah, I didn't do that again. And I guess if I was just with him alone, it would have worked, but he had, you know, one of his helpers with him. So it didn't work. And I thought that was really weird. And the goon brought it up too at the bar when I had no memory of this and stuff like that. And, uh, he said, yeah, you did something to a Kino. He's like, I never saw anybody do anything like that to a Kino before. I remember he just sat down to me at the table one time and he said, uh, you know, Christianity was a cult you know, when it first came out. And I was like, yeah, I think most religions are like cults. And he was just, it was just bizarre things he was saying to me. But yeah, there was that. And then after that happened, because, you know, the torture lasted for days. And Akina was looking up and down my timeline. Like he was, he was able to go not just forward in time, my timeline, but he was, because he was like an elder, the older ones, they can go back in time in your timeline. And he, he said, I figured out why they liked you so much, talking about, you know, Pleiadian. And uh, I, I remember others telling me this, and Robert told me too before I left the command. Um, he told me that I'm a reptilian consciousness. My consciousness is reptilian, but I'm a, an empath. And Aquino said there's maybe four or five of you in the entire universe that are like that, like an empathic reptilian. Wow. And to be uh, genetically compatible with like a Pleiadian, because they're like polar opposites, he says that doesn't happen. And he said the reason, uh, Robert told me this before I left the command, he said that uh, third and fourth density beings see fifth density beings as naive because they just kind of take your word for it. And they have like an attitude if this is mutually benefit beneficial for both of us, then why lie or try to deceive us? They really aren't that streetwise, I guess you would say. So they kind of wanted that, a chance to have like reptilian consciousness uh, born into their people. Uh, just to be like a bit more wise, like to, so they don't get, you know, they get swindled a lot and stuff like that by third and fourth density beings. And uh, yeah, Robert said that's why one of the reasons why, you know, I was given so many wives and stuff like that. And he was he even told me like they were using you, but you liked it. He said that he just said they were just using you. Don't understand. But I don't I don't know if you know I don't think it was true, but that he was just trying to get me to get my mind rewiped and go back into the chair. You don't think what was true, the reptilian consciousness part, or no, that they were just using me. And oh, okay. Just just to get this like DNA into their into, into their bloodline. Right. So that yeah. is that is interesting though, as far as um, you know, a plea because I guess if you are completely empathic, you know, that's sometimes our biggest downfall is we, you know, it can be your greatest asset and your biggest downfall because you can be deceived because you're naive and we believe in giving people a chance and we see the good in them. So, mm -hmm. so they wanted the reptilian consciousness to make them a little more wise so they can actually filter out like the bullshit. It's really interesting. Like the up their discernment level. Right. Almost. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, what Robert was telling me before I left, he went into uh first he 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 started saying things like do you know harry hay and i said no i don't i don't know him and he said he was the uh leader of the gay rights movement in the 1950s he said he was cia and he said that uh the gay rights movement in the 19 uh, or the gay rights movement period has been funded by the cia from day 1 and it was uh, eventually to uh, make 
pedophilia acceptable to the American public. He said, you know, they do it gradually over decades, so people will, it, they slowly implement it in, so people will accept it. And he said, because uh, once a civilization accepts pedophilia, it falls quickly. And th that's just the way, it's a way that, you know, the Satanists have made civilizations in the past fall. Yep, and makes sense. Yeah, so he told me about that. And uh, I mean, they are doing that right now. We actively are seeing that they're trying to make it a part of the LGBT thing. They're adding pedophilia in there. They're calling it. What are they calling it? Um, I'm not sure, but I know they're doing but it. They're trying to they they change the term and they're trying to say it's a sexual orientation and you're a bigot if you don't uh, right. support it. And it's like, no, yeah. it's child abuse. Right. Plain and simple, full stop. And child they're, abuse. they're trying to normalize something that is not normal behavior by any stretch of the imagination. Right. Right. It's it's a sickness. So I it's, mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. He told you this and whatever year that was, this was what, 15 years this ago? Was, yeah, this was probably what, 2000, let's say 2005. Probably early 2005, maybe February of 2005. Right. And I mean, it's all coming true. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And, you know, the stuff with the drag queen story hour, they're trying to put that in libraries for kids and everything like that. So, yeah, it's, yep. it's kind of obvious now that that, that was their plan the whole time, you know. Right. And yeah, uh, I do not doubt that at all. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he told me that, uh, well, then he like he went into the. Well, because he, he started out with that because he said that, you know, it's eventually going to almost get to that level by the time, you know, the military steps in. And that's when he said, you know, Daryl, they start castrating children. And that's when the military steps because of, you know, uh, chemical castrations with, uh, you know, uh, gender reassignment and all that other stuff. He said that's when the military steps in. Was, uh, that was like the last straw for them. And he told me about like the, the cutie show on Netflix and all that stuff. So. Yeah. And then uh, he said that it's difficult how he how he brought it up, but he I don't know if I was I was talking about, I think, a friend of mine named Josh or something like that. And uh, he was uh, like a second generation American from Mexico. And uh, they're, uh, he, he said they're all going to have to go home is how he put it. And uh, I, I said, I said, what do you mean? And he said, uh, he, he said, they're, they're all going home. And I, I said, who? He, he's like, uh, you know, he, he called like Europeans Anglo-Saxons. And I, I know about, you know, the Battle of 1066 and all that with the tribes from Germany invading Britain, and stuff like that back in the day. But he seemed to just call, it was like this thing where he, uh, he just called Europeans Anglo-Saxons and he called like uh, Slavic people Slavs, like Russians. And uh, he said that we we're cousins. And um, he went on about how we were refugees from different worlds originally, you know, about the Muldeck and stuff like that, the asteroid belt and Mars. And then that was a hit. And then we eventually made it to Earth. And then uh, he, he told me uh, the duality of many worlds are things like, you know, the divine feminine and the divine masculine and things like that. He said, but... Uh, our duality, he said every world has duality and our duality is quite different. It's like no other world has our duality. And he said that our duality is the Anglo-Saxon and the Satanist. And he said uh, the mission of the Anglo-Saxon is to lower the population of Asia, especially China. He said that Chinese people were bred to be uh, slaves. They were genetically engineered to be slaves. And he said that he said, why do you think there's never been? Why do you think China has the oldest civilization? They they've never had a major revolt. He said because of, they've never had a real major revolt, so they have the oldest civilization. And uh, I said, what about what about communism? And he said, well, that was pushed upon them by the Satanists. You know, he said, but like their actual culture is the oldest because of that. And then uh, he said, the second mission of the Anglo-Saxon is to ensure the survival of the Anglo-Saxon. And I said, that's it. And he said, that's it. And uh, I said, well, what's the mission of the Satanist? And he just like shrugged his shoulders and he said, you know, war, chaos, just anarchy, you know, and to destroy the Anglo-Saxons. Like that, that's like, 
you know, you just kind of, that's their mission. Yeah. It's like they feed off of that energy. They, so they have to keep generating. It's like they, 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 they wanted to, they want to create the whole planet as, as this machine that generates this loose energy that they feed off of this low vibrational war, chaos, death, destruction, right. sadness, anger. Um, they just perpetuate it. They, they want to keep it yeah. going, perpetuating it. Yeah. And they manipulate everything to do that. And he told me that, yeah, once you get to a certain level, like, you know, Fortune 500 and things like that, border directives, that you're, you're told about this. You're told about the duality of the earth. And it's like, it, it, it's, it's part of the whole karma thing where you have to be given a choice and you choose whether you want to go to the side of the Anglo-Saxon or the, or the Satanist. And I said, well, what do most people choose? And he said, Satanists. And I said, why? Because it's easier and you make more money and you get more power. And uh, he was telling me that, you know, the United, he said the United States will be invaded. And then he said, like, all Western nations will, will be invaded in the future. And I said, by who? And he, he said, you know, Africa, Middle East, you know, Latin America, like just start invading. He's like, they're going to do it under the guise of uh, uh, refugees, climate refugees and all this other stuff. He's like, but it's just a, an invasion and it's funded by a, the Satanists, you know, like Schwab and Carl Schwab and all those guys. And Soros. Soros. Yeah. And that's what they said uh, with the, the, the Davos convention. They were talking about, you know, what are we going to do with the climate refugees? And, you know, stuff like that. They, that was a big topic they talked about. Davos. Like do you think that. they're, do you think they're actually going to be successful? And, in- Pulling that off, though. Well, they are here. It's happening now. Look at what's happening in our border. Thousands of True. people, like they're doing it under the guise of like border security or whatever refugees. They're yeah. letting them in, but it's essentially an invasion, and it's the perfect way. And obviously, none of this was happening when Trump was there. As soon as Biden got in, you know, right? That, that immediately was like the first course of action for him. But if the White Hats really are in somewhat of control or whatever, like I'm curious if. Like, I know things are going to get worse before they get better, but I don't know. You know, some people seem to think the whole planet's going to devolve into this just insane chaos and death <laughs> before it somehow, before it like, it's like it. Some people think they have this very doom and gloom narrative of the future or outlook of the future that somehow it's going to go to complete ashes, basically. And then we're going to rise from that. But like, I don't see, I don't personally don't see things getting that bad. I, I see it getting worse. <laughs> But I think there's a lot of. Did Robert share anything? Doom and gloom going around. Did Robert share anything with you as far as that goes? He yeah, he said it, the original timeline was like that. Okay. And that's why he had to go back in time, and uh, he explained it to me because I, I said, you know, you can't do that because he said that. You know. I said, well, how do you how do you think you're gonna pull this off? Just you know, he says that we're he says we're gonna send them all back home. He's like he's like to their home countries. Uh, I said, what do you mean? He's like, well, you know, the uh, African-Americans and stuff like that. He says there's two different nations in Africa that are willing to take them. Latin America will just go back to their home countries, age, the same thing. And I, I said, you know, I, I said, how are you going to do this? He, he said within 48 hours, all prisons in the United States will become white only. And he said that's how they'll do it in the beginning. And then they'll, they'll uh, um, give the, the family members like a week, like, would you like to go to your, uh, you know, join your family members and uh, the home countries. And then the second week, they're going to force them. And uh, he said, uh, I-, I said, that's not right. I said, you can't do that. You can't do that to people. You can't do things like that. And uh, he said, Daryl, you don't know how hard it was for my ancestors. He kept on saying his ancestors. Like I said, he was from the year 2580, he told me. And he said that uh, when Hillary Clinton won the first election, uh, when, when Hillary Clinton won on her first term, um, the United States became like South Africa. He said, uh, my ancestors were openly raped and murdered. And he said, and the police did nothing. And the press said nothing. And if we tried to fight back, we were the ones that went to jail. And I said, what do you mean? He's like, if somebody broke into our house and we shot him, we were tried for murder and sent to prison. And then he said on uh, Hillary Clinton's second election, or his second term, this is how it was planned out originally. Um, he said that 
they were going to try to conquer us from the inside, but he said that, uh, you know, Second Amendment, because everybody's armed in the United States, would be too difficult. He said they could do it, but it would take 10 or 20 years. So instead, they just got us into a war with China that was intended to be lost, a nuclear war. Because he told me that it was China that was behind a lot of this stuff. And uh, he, uh, yeah, and America fell. He said we weren't just like hit at key targets. He said America was carpet bombed with nuclear weapons. We just fell. And then he said that they started like a hundred, he said it went into hundred year intervals. He said they started a hundred year breeding program <clears throat> where they started sending people in from different countries. And that it was like a breeding program for a century. And then he said, uh, and then they took the uh, lighter skinned people and they sent them to Asia and they did a hundred year breeding program with Asia. And I said, well, what do they do with the darker skinned people? And he said, they killed them all off. And then he said they did that for a hundred years. And then they sent them back like all around. They, after the population built up in Asia, they sent everybody out to different countries. You know, they repopulated, you know, North America, South America, Australia, Africa, all these different continents. And they kind of like, uh, all themselves that they were now one people you know there was there was no you know diversity as they say they were just one single people and uh and then they realized they made a mistake he said he said that uh well with the with what's going on in ukraine and stuff like that right now he told me that that was they were building a biological weapons just to kill off the slavic people they were making weapons there just to kill off slavs but he said that he said that slavs are the most spiritually enlightened people, the spiritually evolved people, I think is how we put it. Uh, but uh, he said that um, the Anglo-Saxon, like the European, they actually have like a connection to the earth. Because I guess that we interbred, I think is what he said, with the uh, the population that was already here, like the uh, Neanderthal uh, population, more than the Slavics did. And uh, so we created more of a connection to the earth. So the Satanists like realized that they had to keep us alive in order not to the, destroy like the duality of a world. Because when you destroy like a world's duality, it can really mess things up. It can destroy the world. So, uh, yeah, so they, they just uh, interbred us with other people instead. They did it that way. And uh, with the Slavs, they just killed them all off with uh, biological weapons. But he said that once they got to like a, a point where, you know, around Robert's time, after you know 100 years so 300 years they realized that they made a mistake and the earth would not go beyond fifth density he said um and uh because you needed like either you needed like the anglo-saxon or the slav they're both hopefully both together and uh he said that that's how we would evolve to like the next level of uh, density and whenever i said things like you know i kept on questioning him about you can't do this and this is the right and things like that he, he said this uh, thing, and he said it to me several times, and that's why I remember it. He said, uh, <clears throat> we must ensure the survival of the Anglo-Saxon. The Anglo-Saxon is the true potential of Earth. Without the Anglo-Saxon, we will not go beyond fifth density. Without the Anglo-Saxon, we will not reach our true potential. And he said that over and over, you know, anytime I questioned it, or, you know, why are you doing this? And he eventually got to a point where he stopped saying it, because I kept on questioning it. And he said, Daryl, look, he said, this has already happened. You know, as far as I'm concerned, where I'm at in my time line, this has already happened. And uh, he said that after that, we're going to declare war on Mexico. <clears throat> he said after they send everybody home, the United States will declare war on Mexico. And I said, why? He said, no matter what uh, scenario we run through Project Looking Glass, Mexico will invade the United States. He said the border is just too vast. He said, so we pushed Mexico down to by the Yucatan Peninsula, by the town, I think it's called Quincy Quattle or something like that, where it bottlenecks. He said, and that's a border we can protect. And then um, he then he said, and this sounds like more further where he's at in his timeline, like around 26th century. He says, uh, he said, we, we take a we take back our original Indo-European borders, is what he said. He said, uh you know, a lot of the uh, the Middle East, Asia. He said we take all of India, and I said, why do you take back India? I said, why do you wh why do you take uh, India? And he's like, he said uh, it belongs to us. He said it was taken from us, and we take it back. 
And I said, well, what, where did the Indian people go? And he said, away. He's like, they just have to live in other places on Earth. And uh, I was really kind of like, didn't know. I was really confused. And he said, we finally blow up that black cube. And I said, what? I didn't know what he was talking about. And he said, Mecca. He said, we blow up Mecca. And I said, uh, what's that? Like, I knew what it was, but I was just so confused. I didn't know what he was talking about. He's like, you know, the place that where the Muslims have to walk around the black cube. I go, oh, yeah. He's like, it's in Saudi Arabia. I said, yeah. He said, uh, he said, we blow it up. And I said, well, what is it? Why is it so, what is it? He says, oh, it's just made out of wood and it's, they paint it black and they drape a cloth over it. And I said, well, why is it so important to them? He said, a, a meteorite fell there a long time ago. And he said, we melt it down for the iron and gold to make ships. And uh, I said, it's just iron and gold. He's like, yeah, it has some silver and copper and nickel in it too, but it's mostly just iron and gold. We melt it down. Hmm. And yeah, I mean. So why do they need to blow it up? Is I guess it's just like a symbolism of like it's ours now or something like that. You know what I mean? It's just, and that was, well, that was another thing he told me too, was while this was happening, he said that, uh, well, you know, what's happening with us right now, he said that, you know, how it happens here is he says they, they destroy your heroes is how he put it to me. Well, real and quick, it, before you yeah. go into that, I'm sorry to interrupt. So you're, what you just explained to us was from a timeline that we averted or was so, like the Hillary Clinton stuff, obviously that didn't happen on this timeline. So that was from a different timeline that that Robert was on and he saw all this stuff happen. So he had to go back in time and like literally change the timeline so we can ascend essentially. Yeah. Go into an opposite direction. Yeah. It, it keep on ascending. He, he said, if, if a world doesn't keep evolving, it dies. He said, it'll eventually die. It's like once you get to ninth density, yeah, you can stay there. And that's, that's high enough to where you could just stay there. He's like, but you have to keep on, a world has to keep evolving. It can't just stay at fifth density. It has to keep going. So when they're, you're talking about them destroying our heroes, I mean, it seems like they're doing that on this timeline. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like so part of that, like I think that what they did that with they while they blew up Mecca, is he said, uh, you know, he, he he was talking about now what's happening now, and he said, you know, he said this, they start off at the lowest level possible is what they try to do, like with us, because uh, so they see our reaction. He said they first they go to comic books, and uh. He told me that, you know, they kill Spider-Man. Like, they kill off Peter Parker. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, they replaced him with like a, um, a biracial kid named uh, Miles Morales. He told me that. about, And I was like, they killed Spider-Man? Because I read, I read comic books back then. And, uh, you know, it was a small base. I used to get them to the base. So, you know, it's a small base. Everybody knows each other's business. And uh, he's like, it's not the main, main continuity. It's his ultimate. He's like, but they do it, you know, on the ultimate Spider-Man timeline. And then he said, then they work their way up the movies, you know, and they judge what the public's going to do. And then they work their way up the movies. He's like, and then they're going to bring out all these horrible remakes. And he's like, and they're, and they're horrible on purple purpose. He's like, they're trying to like demoralize you. They're trying to just destroy your heroes. So they're really making these movies like off as awful as they can, like Star Wars and Ghostbusters remake and all these remakes. And then he says, then they'll eventually, and they'll see what the public does. And if they don't react to it, then they'll go to statues and they'll start tearing your statues down which is like what's happened to us right now, you know, to, to mm -hmm. what's happening right now. And he said that, you know, they're going to keep all those statues. He said, he said they put them in storage and they'll put them back up eventually. He's like, but right now he's like, yeah, he's just letting the people know like what they had planned for us. And they're, and they're letting this, uh, you know, I don't know, migration invasion. He's like, he said they're letting it happen to like show the people, you know, what they had planned for us he's like the white hats are going to let it happen he's like but yeah he's like they're going to stop it he's like it, not only can the 5g can it do things like you know bug your house and stuff like that but it can tell how old you are what sex you are what's your race so they can just find people they can pinpoint people and he was talking about it like that and it was really weird to me and bizarre and i don't know if it's going to happen or not but it's yeah. something. yeah that's my question so so you said they use the look, looking glass technology and no matter what they see uh, a specific endpoint, no matter what happens. But we know timelines are always changing. So how are they certain that that looking glass intel is accurate? And how do they use looking glass over the whole planet like that? 
Well, uh, I asked that too because that movie, what was it? Butterfly Effect just came out. So I was thinking about all these different timelines too. And I know a lot of people have this opinion, but he had a different opinion. He said it doesn't work that way. He's like, he's like, once you, once you get to, you know, a reality where there's people there, there's people born at that timeline, then that's the timeline. Like that's the, that's the concrete. Like w- it, if you're from a different time, it's kind of how he explained it. Then yeah, then it's it, it's iffy. But if people from that future come back in time and say, hey, here we are, then that's the outcome. Like it, like that's it. You know, it, it, there's no. He he kind of I don't know I was talking about string theory and stuff and he's like no it doesn't work that way he just had this real cold kind of attitude about it like mm, it doesn't work that way and uh, uh, the looking glass he he said that they would actually put looking glass technology into bombers and they would open up the bomb bay doors and they would be able to just fly over different parts of Earth and they would see new uh, cities being built you know, uh, populations being moved. And he said, that's how they, they gauge it. He's like, they actually put a looking glass into like a, a bomber plane and they open that Bombay doors and they just stand over and they watch as the plane flies over different parts of the world and they, they can see the changes and everything like that. Wow. So what percentage of accuracy does that looking glass have? Do you know? Well, it, it's a 94 percentile of accuracy. But yeah, he also said, that, yeah, because he said that he, he, mostly lived in his timeline and he said like all of his family members i said this before but he said you know his mother and his father were never born like it never happened that whole you know the mike pence how everybody you know they realized they made a mistake and then they tried to uh you know they had a a one people one race people and they realized they made a mistake they weren't going to go beyond fifth density so then they uh they tried to hybrid the people to extract the anglo-saxon gene and he said, but they couldn't do it, you know, and uh, they just wound up making people that look similar to Mike Pence. And that's how he said it. They all have black hair. They, you know, they pale skin, like a needle nose, kind of like him and a constant like scowl. He had that constant scowl on his face, the way Mike Pence always has. And uh, yeah, there, there, there were hair, salt and peppers at 50, turns white at 60. Then their eyebrows turn white at 70. And they live, uh, he said, an average of 110 years old. But yeah, it's like he, that's how. Yeah. So Robert looks like Pence, is what you're saying? Yeah, like a spitting image. Like he looked like Mike Pence with like an extra ten pounds, maybe fifteen pounds of weight. But yeah. So he claimed. Like so on the timeline that Robert was from, the, all the people look similar to that because of the breeding experiments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of the breeding programs they had, and uh, yeah, and it was just they they tried to extract like a specific DNA out of the people. They they started like a high breeding program. To try to hybrid them, and uh, they just wound up all looking like Mike Pence. <laughs> but it is, yeah. Which makes, which really makes you wonder about Mike Pence and his the role he was playing. Um, he told he told me he was no good too. Yeah, yeah. He told me that he was like on the side that was trying to stop what they were doing, and and just you know, you know, because there's a lot of people that are they know they don't want to be you know, never exist, ne- never to be exi- in existence, never to exist. And he didn't understand. Like I asked him, I said, "Well, why are you still here if your mom and dad's gone?" And he said, "I don't know." Like he had no idea, and it really freaked him out. Like you could tell it scared him. That uh, yeah, for some reason he was allowed to stay, even though you know his mother and father had never been. Wow. Yeah, that's interesting. Like so, as far as no good pants, like I guess he was like a a spy in the Republic, like on Star Wars, as far as um being trump's right hand man at that time yeah maybe and uh, he told me he was in like you know uh, child trafficking and all that other stuff and then pedophilia like mike pence was a pretty bad guy and he's like it doesn't really happen that much in our timeline but it does happen like a lot they kind of you know got that bred that out of people you know because they are fifth density then but they couldn't go beyond fifth density so it didn't really happen then but you know so so pence was fifth fifth density already yeah, like like well, the people from that timeline were fifth density. Maybe they, maybe he had to get pushed back down in the third density. Like I said, they have density chambers where they can do things like that. But yeah, like he came from like a fifth density reality in the future. Wow. Like uh, yeah, and he told me, yeah, he told me Kruger was helping us and things like that, which is like a a, a corporation from like an alternate Germany, an alternate universe in Germany. And uh, yeah, it was. So and how, he also. Well, go ahead. He, he told me that it, it just to t- 
talk about it, he he told me, I don't know if I brought this up before, but he knew uh he was on the ship. I forget the name of the ship. But like I said, he flew F4 Phantoms in uh, Vietnam. And he was on the ship where uh McCain, John McCain, he said he he called it a wet start is what he said it was. He said you flood the turbines with uh fuel and then you ignite them. And uh I guess one of the munitions guys was behind them with the, the you know, they have a big cart full of missiles and they're putting the missiles back on the fighter jets. And when he did that, like a fireball blew up and it just sent missiles everywhere. And it killed a bunch of guys and wounded like dozens of people. And they had to jettison like a few jets and stuff, like just push them off the side of the aircraft carrier because they're, they're on fire. And he said that uh, that's where the expression no name McCain came from. Was uh, everybody on the ship refused to say his name after that? They just called him no name. No name. Everybody hated him because he he like you know on a ship. It's if you wrong someone, it's kind of like prison. You know what I mean? You're on a ship, like you could get killed pretty easily. Right. And uh, so they literally had to like lower him down on a rope to like a, a frigate ship next to the aircraft carrier because everybody on the ship was looking to kill him because of what he'd done. And uh, yeah, he he just he he said he was on that ship where. Uh, John McCain did that, and that's where he got the nickname "No Name McCain" and stuff like that. Was from doing that point start. It's it's interesting. He was one of the predicted deaths by Q. Like Q yep. basically predicted his death down to the minute, or at least a public announcement of his death. So I mean, and that that whole operation I know is deals with timelines and quantum technology, uh, whatever else. Regardless of what people want to believe about it, I I think there's highly advanced technologies being used. Um, otherwise, it would just wouldn't be possible. Um, you mentioned Kruger. So how was Kruger helping us? And like, what role do they actually play? Because we hear a lot of people talk about that corporation and even movies hint at that being video games, video yeah. games and movies like the movie American Ultra. It's a um, basically a super a movie about a super soldier who's activated by CSA and his commander is named Kruger. Like they're telling you without telling you. So. Yeah, Kruger, yeah, it's an independent corporation from like an off, uh, alternate Germany, alternate Earth, alternate Earth. And because uh, I said, well, he told me about Afghanistan. He said we're going to lose Afghanistan. And he said the reason we lose the weapons in Afghanistan is it's a show of good faith of the United States. He said we lose those weapons on purpose because it's showing that America is disarming itself. You know, we're disarming and all these weapons and stuff, all these tanks that we're sending to Ukraine. That's I mean, it, yeah, it's being used to fight, but it's also a way of the United States to say, you know, we're disarming ourselves. We're, you know, we're disarming. We're peace around the world. It's, it's kind of like that. And, uh, you know, I, I said, well, we can't even win a, a war in Afghanistan. You know, I, I said, you know, how, how do you think we're going to, you know, take over a lot of Mexico and things like that? And uh, he said, what, he said, uh, with the technology we have, nobody can stop us, is what he said. And I said, what do you mean? He said, Kruger's helping us. And I said, who's Kruger? And he explained to me, you know, it's a, from a, a, another universe, a, an alternate Germany in another universe. And he looked at me and he said, you work for Kruger. He said, don't you remember? And I said, no. But I, and I still really don't remember that. But I remember he said that. He said, you work, he said, you work with Kruger. He's like, you don't remember that. And I said, no. But yeah, he, he and then he said that, uh, well, I and that going back to Mexico, I, I said, you know, do we ha do we suffer any casualties? And he said some. And I said, well, what about them? And he said they lose one third of their population. And I said, uh, that's pretty much every fighting age man. He just looked at me. And then he said that, like, that's kind of like Mexico is going to be like the example, going to be like the first one. So. He says whenever we go to other countries, when we uh, reestablish, as he put it, the Indo-European borders, he says, like, nobody tries to fight us after that. Like, if we tell them to leave and they leave. And he said it, it, Kruger's helping us by giving us, like, each e tech that for warfare and stuff to, to where we just can't be stopped, stopped, is how he put it. And it was just, you know, like I said, if, if, if I questioned him, he just said that same thing to me that he said before. And it was like, it was like his... His saying, you know, he, he right. just kept repeating that. Right. And so the movie Tenet, if you've seen that, it's like it shows them using time, like time travel technology, mm -hmm. I guess, to like do the mission before it ever even happens. So they can know exactly what to bring, how it's going to play out, where the attacks are coming from. And they're unstoppable because they already know exactly what's going to happen. And 
I've heard other like um, Johann Fritz said that that movie, you know, represents what Kruger does. So if Kruger has that type of technology, obviously they would be unstoppable if they were to use some sort of time travel. They can jump into the future to, you know, fight the battle first and then come back and then go in with what they need, the proper supplies, medics, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Uh, did he say anything about Australia by any chance? Not that I can think of. No, no, not that I can think of. Because there's, I mean, they seem to be like the example right now. It seems like everything happens in Australia first, and then it's tested, you know, it's tested there and then implemented around the world. And I feel like, you know, there's information out there that says like the very first humans originated in Australia and it's potentially the true heart chakra of the planet. And there's a lot of, in Australia seems to be significant, a lot more significant than uh we might believe so i didn't know if he mentioned them ever no i mean he, he just gave me like a point of view of uh you from the united states you know right. he was you know in the u.s navy so he gave me like a, a point of view of the U- united states he did tell me yeah he, he said that aboriginals and like sub-saharan africans were the true uh natives of earth is like how he said it he's like the rest of us Either like we were either created or we were like uh, refugees from other worlds and stuff like that. Mm. So what about like white man? Like we would probably be created, I would imagine. Well, I I think of like he he explained to me like we were refugees. Like we we were like hybrid and stuff like that. But, you know, we were refugees from other parts of the solar system. From Maldek? Mars and stuff like that. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, he went into the Maldek thing about how it was blown up by the reptiles and it became the asteroid belt. And then it really upset the higher density beings so they really came down hard on the reptiles so the reptiles when we went to mars they just kind of used like a like a loophole so they didn't blow it up but they destroyed all the water which basically killed the killed the planet pretty much then we had to eventually go to go to earth and then that that's where like the higher density being stepped in and you know the the war that is uh in the uh the writings of the hindus and stuff like that of the war of the gods and all that that stuff you know that's when all that happened and everything. that's where that comes from it's all yeah real. yeah mm-hmm. so it was like higher higher density like ets were actually helping us in that war yeah so did he mention anything about higher density ets helping us through this time oh yeah like like i said i i, I worked with the i think arcturians are called i remember they had the with the deep sapphire blue skins that they helped us a lot the people with the real deep Skin. They had black eyes, and their uh, pupils looked almost like uh, like blue galaxies, like swirling galaxies. It looked like. Really, I, yeah. just, I mean, we've heard that that seems to be a theme lately about Arcturians helping. Yep. Um, with this to be, cleanup, yeah, they seem to be very involved. Right, one of the most, if not the most, involved race <laughs> with our planet right now. I believe they're ninth. Yeah, I believe they're like ninth density beings. Yeah. Really. So. What was your involvement with Arcturians that you have a memory of them? I just remember them helping us, and I remember, I remember as saying that you're taking too long. Like we need your help now, and you're taking too long. And I was kind of frustrated. And real high density beings, they can do this kind of thing where they can appear as you in front of you. Like it, it all of a sudden, it looked like me, and it kind of like showed me the way I was acting and I was acting like pouty and kind of childish and like <laughs> kind of mocking me to my face. Like, you know, you're not, you're, you're taking too long. Why are you doing this? You're not, you're not moving fast enough. And, you know, they said that, you know, they just have a way of, you know, seeing what we can't. So mm-hmm. it, if it appears that things that are taking too long and it appears that things are cruel and harsh, but it's just the way it has to be because they could see, you know, many moves before us. So they, they know what to do and, you know, they know and it might seem cruel and, and like it's taking too long. But they're, you know, they're taking their time because they have to. And they see things that we can't. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. That makes a lot of sense because, you know, there's a lot of people who like to complain and get very frustrated when things we seem to be na- making no progress at all. It actually seems like we're going backwards. But uh, these moves are taking place behind the scenes like we don't have like the capacity to see what's going on and i think thing moves are taking place in possibly other dimensions and obviously the important stuff we're we're not going to know about like the the fake chinese 
CIA spy balloon, that whole false flag propaganda, whatever, like that's like, if that was a real threat, we would never be allowed to know about it or see about or hear about it. Right. And it wouldn't have made, they wouldn't have made such a stink about it. Uh, so the real moves we, we don't hear about. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, and it, the whole thing, as far as what we can see with social media, it looks like they're going to get put on trial pretty soon. It looks like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not wondering about it, but you know, they were, what was it? Twitter or Google or whatever that they're getting charged because doctors were trying to say that this, you know, this pandemic or whatever, it, it really wasn't as bad as everybody was saying, you know, people from Harvard and stuff, doctors from Harvard were trying to say that. And they were like uh, canceling their accounts and things like that for, you oh, know, yeah. Like, yeah. And so the, these people are, are going on trial now. The, the, the trials have begun yet, but, you know, they're just the, the depositions, I guess they call them. They're, they're, they need, they're opening up arguments and stuff. Yeah. They need to be. They're, I mean, the oh, crimes yeah. the crimes against humanity just over the last few years alone are are astounding. Like, it's unbelievable. So right. there needs to be some justice and accountability here. Otherwise, right. what are we doing? You know? Right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> like you said earlier, like the one, the people trying to fight back are the ones that get arrested. Like we're trying to, like, if you defend yourself in your home, you get arrested. And exactly. It's like the people who see the truth and like are the enemy are the enemy exactly. of the system because the criminals are running the show. Right. Kind of thing. That's why whenever, anytime you try and out somebody, when you see them, when they're found out and they immediately spin it around, like you're the enemy. I mean, mm. we see that happen all the time. Yep. So, because they know that we're the actual threat. You're a threat to their narrative right. and their ego and their, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they are the Satanists, you know, they're, they are that negative, you know, the, the negative side of, of, of our world. I mean, that's what they are, you know, that's what that is. As far as what I was explaining about, you know, which is which. And he, he told me, yeah, when he told me this, he said, like, the Satanists had the power. He said, but that's going to shift. And then it's going to become more of the positive side of Earth. We'll have the power after that. And then, yeah, he, that's when he went on about, you know, he told me about Russia and he told me about the thousand years of peace and beyond. And he said that Russia would become a, the next world power for the thousand years of peace and beyond. And he said that they couldn't decide who would become the next world power. They almost got into a war over that. And he said that uh, basically they brought it down to whoever has the most natural resources because we're going to need all these natural resources. That's what Gene Deco just said on it our is. on our recent episode. He said it was going to come down to Russia simply based on the resources. Yeah, yeah. So that's how they did it. And he told me that yeah, he he said that you know the Slavic nations like the Eastern European will go to uh, Russia. He said because there he says it, and it's not you know it, it starts with the Ukraine, but then it happens more peacefully after that because uh, they want to protect the Slavic people is what he said. And then he said that uh, Alaska is going back. To uh, Russia, and I, I said, uh, well, you know, is there war? He's like, no, we just give it back. And I said, why? He said, because it belongs to them. And yeah. I said, well, I said, well, the people of uh, Alaska, will they have to, will they, you know, be kicked out, or will they lose their property or their land? And he said, no. And I said, so they'll just have to learn how to become bilingual. And he said, yes. And I said, so it's just, it seems like a peaceful thing, but it's just, you know, Alaska's going to go back to Russia, is what he told me. Yeah, that's really interesting. I just watched a video about someone explaining how Alaska became Alaska and how it's technically part of Russia. And it doesn't make any sense, obviously, that it's even part right. it's even part of the United States. So that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, because these invisible borders make no sense at all. And when you start looking at a map, you're like, how who decided this? You know, what actually happened? Like it wasn't even done by wars. Yeah, maybe some wars and battles were fought to establish borders, but someone was pulling the strings. And it's like you do something in one country and it's completely okay. You you, you walk over an invisible line and suddenly you can get arrested. Or right. It's like, like completely different. Like, <laughs> Makes no sense. Like what happened to me. I was even states. Right. It's like that. I was on my cell phone and I drove across the Missouri Illinois border and I got pulled over. Because I was on my phone. I didn't even know that this was a few years ago. I didn't know they made it a law. I'm like, okay, so 10 feet back, it's le legal for me to be on my phone. Right. If I'm if I'm right there, yeah. it's completely okay. But I'm right here and it's not. Yeah, it's like ridiculous. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, wow. So is there anything else that you can remember? Or did, was that about it? About what he told me, like, personally? Yeah, I mean, that was about it. I mean, I mean, he went on about, you know, the gold. And the and the you know the the 
he, he told me that we were the ancestors of the uh, Atlanteans. And uh, he told me that once they uncover all the, they have all this, you know, the, the, the Library of Alexandria, he said that before they burned it down, they, they grabbed all the scrolls and everything and all the books from it and they put it in the catacombs of the Vatican. He told me that uh, once, uh, you know, all of this is released, everything happens, we'll be told that everything that we've been taught, like our, as far as our history has been inverted, you know, it has been wrong. And, uh, you know, evolution is nonsense, kind of like what he said. And uh, he said, um, yeah, it, 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 there'll be enough gold. He said, he said there was a septillion of gold and dollars, enough to make everybody on earth a hundred millionaire. And he said, I said, well, everybody become a hundred millionaire. And he said, no, he said, nobody would work. He said, but you know, our, our economy will just be, you know, he kept on talking about how great it's gonna be. Like, you'll be able to pay off a, a car in six months, a brand new car, and you'll be able to pay off a house in three or four years. You know, and, and you won't have to work. Like everybody will take nice vacations. And, but he also said everybody's going to have to work because I asked that, too. I said, well, you know, you have all these people from other, you know, countries that are doing the manual labor jobs that we don't want to do. And he's like, yeah, he's like, everybody got to work. But he said he said everybody's going to have a really good like pay. And he said in things like, you know, mental disorders or physical disorders that will all be cured by med beds and things like that. So people who, you know, have, have, are orophobes and stuff like that feel as though they can't leave their home and things like that that can be all fixed with the med beds and people who are you know quadriplegics and things like that that'll be all be fixed by med beds so everybody's going to work you know and we're going to have like a really uh really long and really uh, like arduous kind of like we're going to have to tear up all of our infrastructure and make a brand new like infrastructure and that, that's going to be like a huge part of what we're going to be doing coming up in the next you know and that makes the most sense because yeah. That's what my argument has been this whole time. It's like, like even if we got, if we received all this technology, like we have no, inf we we do not have the infrastructure. We need for an it. infrastructure for it. Yeah, first. it's it, we're, it's nothing set up for what we want and what people are begging for and demanding for. So, I can see that being a reality. Like that has to be the first thing, and it's going to be hard for people to grasp. I think because I was thinking about it. You know, we're so used to cars and travel and roads and everything mm -hmm. and like the older generations get pissed some people don't like change and i see that happening a lot so mm -hmm. we have to like be willing to like let go of of what we knew to be our reality because yeah um there has to be a transition period yeah too that's what people a lot of people want this like immediate all disclosure everything all at once well that's that would do more harm than good you need to understand like there has to be some kind of a transition period I, and it does but that being said, it can't be hundreds and hundreds of years like some people seem to think. I, I doubt that. Happen. Yeah. You know, it's going to be quick, but it needs there needs to be like some kind of a transition right. short phase. And and he said that we're going to keep like corporations like uh, Amazon and stuff. He's like they'll be out of business, but we'll keep the name. He's like because we need the infrastructure, we we need their roads, we need their trucks, we need all that stuff. So mm -hmm. you know. We're, we're going to keep the name and stuff like that. But, you know, the businesses might be out of business and the, the, the CEOs and stuff. They might have been executed or sent to prison or whatever like that. He's like, well, we're going to keep, you know, we need to keep the, all the infrastructure, everything they have already built to, to set up this new world that we're going to be in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I be, they have to utilize some of it. And a, and a lot of uh, our like aircraft and stuff will be retrofitted with new technology, I think, until it's finally obsolete until like we it's no longer a plane as we recognize it but we're using a more advanced craft so mm -hmm. it's it's going to look it's going to be awkward for a while probably and you're it's going to be like we see in some like even star wars like you see super advanced technology then someone's driving around this old rickety craft it's like like anti-gravity but it still almost looks like a car you know right. so i feel like it's going to eventually look like that mm -hmm. i don't know yeah, probably. Yeah, like, like he said it's going to be hard, you know, it's going to be difficult. It's not going it, to, a lot of people seem to think, you know, I've heard a lot of people just say it's kind of like, oof. But, you know, I, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be a lot of work and it's going to be very difficult. But he said, yeah, he's like, hey, even though you are, it, it's a difficult job and you're working and stuff like that. The way he explained it is this, you know, the work, work hours are going to be different. Work week's going to be different, you know, and it's just, like I said, everybody's going to be able to take like great vacations. Everybody's going to take like six weeks. You know, mm -hmm. it's not going to just be like you're going to have two weeks of vacation every year. You know, everybody's going to have, you know. Yeah, because it's a, it, yeah. The, the, the nine to five 
the way it's designed right now is a it's like a slave system it's designed to be that way and to suck the life out of you and it's right. so if so if the whole system's being changed you know all the suppressions going away of course that's going to change too and of course money's going to change and it, the quality of life like you're describing it's going to immediately go up a lot for the whole planet right and that's what needs to happen and they they decided a long time ago that the eight hour they did they decided on the eight hour workday because studies were done. And after eight hours, they noticed an employee would become less efficient. So, but now we have mm -hmm. people working 10, 12, 14, 16 hour shifts. And that's literally sucking the life force out of you. Yeah. And then a portion of that money, you don't even get, it goes into your retirement. So it's a trick. They keep you working for the end of your life. So then you can enjoy it. And, you don't, and even then you don't get to enjoy your life because by then they're taxing it and things have been taken away from you. And so it's all designed to like keep you just spinning your wheels, you know, spinning mm -hmm. your feet in the mud. And that's something else he said. He said that, uh, you know, because I, I asked him, will, will there be a jubilee? I, I, I asked that. And he said, no. He's like, but you'll get back the money that you were taxed. He's like, you'll just mm -hmm. get it all back. So AKA all stolen, taxes, stolen yeah. from you. <laughs> yeah, all this, all this money that was taken, and, yeah, and usury and tax, you know, making money from nothing and, you know, uh, you know, making wealth from nothing and, and uh, taxation and all that stuff, it's, it, it's going to be no more. And, and they're going to have, you know, all these, you know, people who are retired and stuff like that. You know, you got some people who are retired, they have to buy, uh, you know, cat food, cans of cat food to survive. These people are just going to be given money, boom, all at once, you know, who are retirement age and things like that, because they're just, they're going to be getting back all that money they were taxed their entire life. So, you know, it was all kept on record and stuff like that. So everything's going to be given back to people all at once. And it's going to be a way, you know, just to pay off all your debts and make everything a lot easier and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that taxes are needs like, to happen. taxes sicken me. It's the, like, it literally is the hardest thing for me to do to see that tax form and file my taxes and pay those taxes when I know what it is. Like it is, it goes yeah. against everything. Every fiber of my being knows that it's wrong. And yet I still have to do it. And like, if you, I obviously people are going to say, no, you don't have to, but and okay, tr you try not paying your taxes, you'll go to jail. So right. yeah, you're forced at some point. Well, like in, in Missouri, you can't even get a driver's license unless you show proof of that you paid your taxes. So right. You, right. So you can't survive in the system without right. You can survive maybe off grid if you don't get off caught. Grid, but good luck. You know, you're ba it's basically forced by violence. It's theft. It's right. and then and then you, to make it a million times worse, once we know what that money is supporting, it's it's horrific right and we're forced to support that so right yeah this it needs to happen it can't it can't happen soon enough but at the same time i know it's a it's a process right. and a transition to that so it seems like everything that they did that happened on the timeline one the first timeline you're talking about with hillary getting into office and all that stuff um it didn't go according to plan obviously we switched timelines or however that looked i don't quite understand it but they're still trying everything that you explained happened in that timeline they're still trying it all um but it's just not having the effect that it did because of the whole trump and q operation that threw a wrench in the gears mm -hmm. whether you like him or hate him you can't deny the massive catalyst that that was which is why they're they're in panic mode and trying to just throw out everything all at once because they're desperate to right. steer us in their direction still you know mm -hmm. yeah and like he said he, i mean he even said that you know trump's all right He's he's like, but you know, don't, don't put all your face in Trump. You know, it's, it's us, it's the military, and it's not just the military; it's us as the people too. You know, it's like it's us that's doing it. You know, and it, you know, don't invest everything in the heroes. But yeah, like yeah, he he, he said it's us. He's like, we're doing it. The military is doing it. Those are the people that are behind it. Right, and, and, and it's not just the United States; it's like all around the world, like India, China, Russia, like all these people. All these militaries are fed up. They're done with it. They're not going to protect it anymore. They're not going to fight for them anymore. He said it's a coup. He said that's what's happening right now. It's a military coup. It's like they're not, they're not working for them anymore. So it's yeah, it's amazing. It's not going to look the public's pub unaware of it. Like the masses are going to be completely unaware of a lot of the stuff that's taking place. That's why we don't people get angry when they don't see the changes. But these moves are being made, and um, you know, this information you're sharing take it or leave it. Like, obviously we can't validate this stuff. Um, but it, what you, what you were told in 2005, a lot of that stuff, if not everything you mentioned is, is manifested, has manifested and is happening. So 
we can't ignore everything. And uh, we appreciate you sharing all that information because it gives us to think about. And it actually gives us hope. Like, you know, hey, this isn't all a loss, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us, Daryl, once thank again. Thank you so much. Yeah. And sharing your information. Is Do you want to um, let people know how they can find you or? Well, I have a website, Daryl, all lowercase, D-A-R-Y-L, D is in Delta, James.com. And that has all my videos. I'm working on a book. It's not done yet, but it's in the works. I'm excited about that for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you so much, Daryl. This has been awesome. Some stuff yeah. to think. You give us a lot to think about, definitely. Uh, guys, thank you for tuning in. We love you all. Grab a ticket to our conference. Come hang out with us if you feel so inclined. We would love to see you there. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're very looking forward to it. Live stream tickets are available if you can't make it for $99. Journey to truthcon.com. And day passes are actually going to be made available on April 1st. So if you are local or you can't stay the whole time, day passes will be available for $88. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And until next time, guys, have a great evening. We love you. Good night. Good night, guys. There was a CIA director named William Colby, who in the 1980s said, we'll know our disinformation campaigns are successful when everything the American people believe is fake. When we realize how powerful we are when we set our intentions and we realize that we aren't just this, we are just these multi-dimensional light beings and time is an illusion and you know it's everything's a perception, then you can go forward and backwards and, and embody it and just pop out and go and do this work. We can do amazing things when we set the right intentions to do it. And I said, this is this is us on this plane. You know, like, this, that's what this is. We're going to the moon. And you say, this thing is a lot older than you think it is. And we've been going to the moon a long time. But I wrote on it. I knew that we went to the moon. And so I always knew there was a base on the moon from a young age. And our DNA is a complex recording system of the history of the entire universe. The history, you know, of, of everything. That not just this timeline that we know, but multiple timelines of reality. There are a total of nine different categories of planets uh, in the universe. Uh, we people on Earth, we are living on a category one planet, like elementary school students. And the Theobans, they are living on a category nine planet, like uh, college professors. So they have been really guiding us throughout history. Teokum let us know that this facility under the Sandia Mountain is considered an information station for interstellar travelers coming to the planet. They tell us that their facility was retrofitted into the ancient tunnel system that already existed. And as far as the bending the space-time continuum, I've had something like that happen. And what seemed like about a five minute encounter has been four and a half hours of missing time. And I was completely conscious. And when you're dealing with a type three, type four, type five civilizations, that can work with the different coexisting timelines, all bets are off, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every time we have Bigfoot activity out there, we're having ETs and orbs and stuff like that. We have a lot of the stuff documented. As a matter of fact, um, I'm a member of three different teams and I work with people from all over the country out in the field. And um, we actually have documented a portal, something that we consider to be a portal. Um, opening and we sent two of our team members inside of it and really? it disappeared and then came back out. I would suggest that we take it one step further and say humanity has never known who we are. We've always been in the thought control matrix and one step further, perhaps we could say that we're in a conscious, consciously controlled state of hypnosis. In other words, are the thought control matrix creators constantly bombarding us with frequencies that keep us from being telepathic, that keep us from remembering who we are. The thought control matrix was set up and we have never known our potential, our power, our yeah. beauty, our, our, our incredible connection. It makes no sense at all. There is no reason for it other than the programming that we've received for generations because it's all about order. It's all about listen to listen to your elders, listen to the teachers, listen to the adults, listen, listen, listen. And what that does is it, it, it dims the light of the child 
and it makes them feel like they don't have a voice and why that's designed that way by the dark side and that's in the system is so that they grow up and they just listen to and they do what they're told and they're good little boys and good little girls and they lose their sense of self they lose their north their true north yeah. so many adults are walking around in, the, in this world they don't know who they are so the planet itself is now beginning to split it's beginning to divide again into a higher vibrational earth and a lower vibrational earth and the race of man is dividing with it and we're becoming less and less aware of one another and over time what will happen and i don't know how long this will be one world will have all higher vibrational beings on it and the other one will all be third dimensional beings and we will not perceive each other anymore <laughs>